Hi folks, my perspective here. If I showed you two viewpoints, one viewpoint was right and one viewpoint was wrong. The only way for you to determine which is right and which is wrong is for you to investigate, to do some thinking. Now, now most people don't want to do this. They rather will tell you, just tell me what's the truth. The problem with this is that if you don't investigate and think and reason, you become programmed. That's not intelligence. Intelligence is when you have thought and reasoned something out for yourself. You've put forth the effort. And when you do, the reward you get is intelligence. And it's worth the effort. If you value what is true, you'll pursue it and put the effort in. So most people say, well, you know, I don't really care much as long as I live my life, but you're missing out. It's worth putting the effort in to test things if they are true or false. Your life becomes richer and you won't be misled. So one way that the people in the system, they mislead you, is to endorse something. Famous name brands. They can endorse anything. Sometimes it's just a person in a white jacket is enough for someone to say, oh, there you go. That must be true. So they'll tell you that Pythagoras has endorsed the ball earth. That the Greeks for hundreds of years have endorsed the ball earth. So is that true? They'll tell you that the Pythagorean theorem, right, proves that the earth is a ball. So we know Pythagoras' theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So for example, if the vertical is 6, 6, 6 is 36, the base is 8, 8, 8 is so 64. You add them together, that's 100. The square of 100 is 10, so X, the hypotenuse, then is 10. Or the other way around, on the, on the opposite side, the 13, 13s for the hypotenuse, 169, 12, 12 is 144 minus 144 from 169 is 25 y then is 5 and this works right we know it works but now can I use this theorem to endorse the ball earth so they'll tell you yes you see the radius of the earth plus your height of the earth that's your observer to the radius to the height right will give you the distance from you, the observer to the horizon. And this is false. It's a false endorsement. It doesn't work. You see, most people will stop here and they won't question the ball earth because they say, well, why, why should I? Because Pythagoras has endorsed the ball earth. But it's misdirection. It's deception. It's false. So we're going to have a look at this and we're going to apply Pythagorean's theorem and see if it works on a ball earth. So let's start with an aeroplane, right? Well, if this is true, right, as the aeroplane flies towards the horizon, he actually flies up around the ball, not towards the horizon. Right? And your position on the ground you had 90 degrees to the to the tangent to the horizon you look up what do you see you see the bottom of the airplane it means airplanes at different distances from you will all be flying at different angles depending on their height and the pilot while well, you see he sees the horizon he applies that theorem to the horizon and the passenger well he, he's be, he'll be looking into space or does the Pythagoras theorem only apply to the pilot? You see, it simply doesn't work. So we've been lied to. You see, they don't want you to question the world that you're living in. They want you to be like the computer. A programmed piece of junk. Incapable of thinking and reasoning so that you can be a, a pigeon and a stool for them. 
to use. Also the tangent, the airplane right, as he raises his position, his angle changes. Already this tells us there's a serious problem. Right, now think. So the higher the airplane flies, he's at a different angle to the ground. What happens now? So think. How do you disprove this? Well, airplane flies towards the horizon. Right. An airplane, for example, flying at the same altitude as this airplane, will be higher than him. But what actually happens is this. So just think. Reason and think about the world that you're living in. Let's just take this simple act of having a drink on an airplane. Right? So the pilot, he sees the horizon in front of him, he has a drink, it's level. Right? A passenger, he has a drink, he sees the horizon at eye level. The guy at the back, he looks out the back window, he has a drink. All the drinks are, eye, are level and they see the horizon at eye level. What does this tell you? It was flat. So how does a simple drink then prove Pythagorean's theorem that the earth is not a ball? Well, if they pour your drink on the ground, right, you know your drink's flat. When the airplane's on the ground, they pour your drink, it's flat. It's vertical, right? When the airplane rises, right, they can't pour your drink because it's not flat with the ground. The airplane has to be parallel with the ground. So it simply means the Pythagorean theorem is simply telling you that you will never be able to have a drink on an airplane. Because even when the plane levels out, right, it levels out, right, it can never level out if the earth's a ball and the pilot's pointing his plane towards the horizon. It's as simple as that. No drinking on the plane because the earth's a ball and the pilot sees the horizon. Right, the point is, Pythagorean's theorem, it's all vertical and straight lines. In fact, if you just look at the world around you, Pythagorean's theorem, it can be argued, proves that the earth is actually flat. The opposite. I just turn the circle around because I see in a circle around me and I see everything vertical. The point is also is that I cannot write down a formula on a two-dimensional piece of paper that tries to explain the world around me and that formula doesn't take into account the limitations of the human eye. Now really when you say the limitations of the human eye, m most people they start to say, oh wow, well, that's, that's crazy man, I'm Superman. My eye has no limitations. I do not have any limitations. Well, this, the sad story is that modesty and humility helps us understand that the human eye is limited to how far it can see. It's as simple as that. The human eye, we see light in straight lines. It's a marvel of creation. And how it, it uses light. Light travels in a straight line. Right, we see everything square and vertical. Things don't distort on the horizon. The light travels into the eye. The eye then takes that information, flips it upside down. The human brain then flips it back 180. It's truly a marvel of creation. But what we see and the marvel of the eye and its limitations help us to understand that it works in straight lines. Therefore, the ocean 
flat. The plane that we're on is flat. So simple things in Pythagoras about a lighthouse, you see, just simply don't work. Where light travels in a straight line, and because light travels in a straight line, ships at distant, different, di different distances from the lighthouse see the light head on, the water's flat. As we raise our position, we always see the horizon at eye level, right? Because of perspective. Therefore, the ship on the horizon sees the horizon at his eye level. And he sees the lighthouse at eye level. So the human eye, a marvel of creation, helps us understand the world we're living in. We see in perspective. An understanding perspective. All we do, all we need to do, is to look and think and reason. When the people in this world use a brand name or someone famous to endorse something, that's when you need to watch out. Don't take the people in this world, don't take them at face value. They're not your friends. They're not here to teach us the truth. They're here to enslave us mentally and physically. So think. Look. Pay attention to the world that you live in. Look at the lines. Look at the light. Look at the angles. Think. As this quadcopter changes its position, watch how things move in relation Watch. See the vertical lines. From the light. Hi folks, from my perspective here. In this clip I'm going to be looking at a few things and one of the main things I'm going to be looking at is a 90 degree tangent to a circle. Right? And this issue of a 90 degree tangent to a circle is always used to mislead people. And I'm going to show you exactly how they con people and how they trick people. And one of them is this person who calls himself Bill K. Right? So I'm going to show you how to answer them. So the issue is that they are say a man on a ball, his tangent, his angle is always 90 degrees. So let's look at this. This is Pythagoras' theorem, right? That means the observer is 90 degrees to the tangent, right? And the horizon is also 90 degrees. So the principle in Pythagoras' theorem is the same. But now as we apply this in 3D space, right, there's a problem. The problem is that the observer, so let's look at the observer on the top. He sees the horizon in front of him. If he turns 90 degrees to his left, he cannot see the horizon in front of him. But a person on earth turns 360 degrees around him and always sees the horizon in front of him. The tangent in this case is also 90 degrees and it's a con. It's a trick. So let's apply this to two helicopters, right? These two helicopters are 90 degrees to the tangent, yet their angles to each other are different. Right? these two helicopters cannot see each other at the same angle and they're both 90 degrees to the surface of the ground they both look at the horizon right the man on the ground looks up and he sees the helicopter at an angle do you understand where the con comes in if that helicopter turns 180 degrees right he's flying into the clouds and the person on the other side flies into the ground whereas in reality a person is 90 degrees to the tangent because a person is 90 degrees to the earth because the earth's flat. The helicopter sees the other person level with the ground and flies in a straight line to the helicopter. If you're in an aeroplane, right, and you say, well, I can see the curve of the earth at my window, apply the same principle. You're mistaken. Because that would mean then, right, that you can't, the pilot can't see the rise in front of him. 
your airplane is flying at an angle. The person on the ground will see an airplane flying 90 degrees to the tangent, right, at an angle because he has to see the horizon. So do you understand? We're applying the principle of a tangent, 90 degree tangent to a circle. And we're seeing how it doesn't work. It's a con. It's a cheap trick. The pilot then, if he flies in a straight line, well, he has to fly over the earth and fly away from the earth. So the earth will drop up and drop down. So at the starting position, the airplane has to see a bulge in front of him. And there's the point. Right. So... If we look into the shadows of the world we live in, in those people who hide in the shadows, they reveal who they are and who their master is and who they're serving. Don't look at the person. Sometimes look at the shadows that is cast by a person. Right. Here's this fallen angel. That they, I'm not sure that apparently they bring these, these uh, statues out. And there, this fallen angel is looking at uh, the leaning tower of Pisa. So what's going on now? Who's this fallen angel? Well, he's the master of the tower. Right, so let's get back to our man. Right, he's 90 degrees to the tangent. He has the issue. If he's standing on the shoreline, as soon as he dips his, his telescope down, it's game over. Why? Because if he turns 90 degrees to his right, his angle is not the same. Therefore, he'd be looking into space. So, the issue then is, that is why they always harp on this fact that the man's angle to the tangent is always 90 degrees. Because if he turns, it's game over. If he angles himself down, it's game over. So, as a man, he's standing on the shoreline, right? He sees a ship on the horizon. He always has to look straight ahead, but if he looks straight ahead, right, he'll see the clouds. For him to see a person on the shoreline and on the other end, he has to dip his telescope down. And then once again, if he turns 180 degrees, he can't see the man on the other side behind him because then he'll be living on a donut. And the point is, people do turn 180 degrees and see a person on the shore behind him. Right. That's the issue. So the man's tangent is always 90 degrees in this instance. So we put him in a hot air balloon and we just send him up. All right, now he's above the clouds. Now he has to look down to see the ship on the horizon. And once again, you turn him to his 90 degrees to his right or you turn him 180, he cannot see the ocean behind him. And what's the point? The point is that people in hot air balloons turn 180 degrees and they see the ocean all around them. Because if, it were, if the man was above a ball, he couldn't be above a ball, he'd have to be above a donut. The earth would be a donut for him to see the horizon on both sides of him. 180 degrees in front and behind him and a ship on each horizon. Do you understand? It's a con. It's a trick. That's why they say the man must be on top 90 degrees, but we've already proven that's a con. So the man, he's 90 degrees on the ball, you're right. He can't be in the middle of the ocean, right? He's on the shoreline. If he sends a helicopter in a straight line, well, the helicopter is going towards the clouds. Right? So the issue is that each element, the ship, the person on the shoreline and the helicopter, each will have its own angle and will see things at different angles. Do you understand? A helicopter returning back to the man would actually be flying towards the ground. That's a con, a cheap trick. So the further the helicopter goes out, right, the higher it's actually going at the same time. Whereas we know a helicopter flies in a straight line, maintains its same height above the ground. So the 90 degree tangent is just that con. 
So each person then would have to see things at different angles, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Right. In reality, right, each person, the man, sees the other person on the opposite shore, head on. The helicopter flies straight and the ship is straight. That would mean there's a bulge of water in front of each person. Right. There has to be. And when you tell them that, they get upset with you. Because now the whole thing is exposed. And the reality is, right, that the helicopter sees the horizon at eye level. He sees everything level. What is level is level to the helicopter. What is level is level to the man. Who's seen both helicopters. That helicopter turns 360, he sees the horizon all around him because the earth's flat. The man in the hot air balloon sees the horizon flat. He sees everything level. Right, the ship sees the helicopter's level, he's, the ship sees the man level. And the only reason why is that the earth has to be flat for this to work. So let's have a... Hi folks, my perspective here. Often, when someone says, I can see the curve of the earth when I'm standing by the ocean in front of me, or when I'm on an airplane and I look out the window, I can see the curve of the earth. Now when you show them that this is not possible, then they'll say, your scale is not right. So in this video clip I want to address that issue about scale. So scale means more than just simply size. In other words, I can have a scale and I can have a large object and I can have a small object, but the scale can still be balanced. But yet in the system, people are blindfolded. They don't look at the scale in front of them. They rather listen to the scales at their feet, the scales of the snake at their feet. It's a different kind of scale. Then I'll tell you, your scale is not right. Well, they're blindfolded. Whose scale is twisted and whose scale is crooked? Who's looking and listening to the wrong scale? So let's have a look at that. Remember, scale is not just about size. And I went to, in this video clip, hopefully expand on that and help you to reason, think and look at the bigger picture. So for example, a person says, he has a yacht and I can see the yacht behind the curve of the earth. Now we know that objects get smaller as they get towards the horizon. So let's have a look at this in a bit of detail. Here's a man. He sees two sailboats between himself and the horizon. These two sailboats move away from him towards the horizon. The sailboats are the same size. They're the same distance from him. Everything's perfect because the ocean is flat. So if you're saying that the ocean is curved, well then you cannot see the sailboat on your right in that position. It's simple. That sailboat cannot be in that position. Because the distance is the same. So that sailboat must be below the horizon and in a lower position. So whose scale is crooked and whose scale is twisted? It's those who are saying that the earth is a ball. The only way that you can see this, these two sailboats, the same size and the same distance, the earth must be flat. Because they're in the same position on the horizon. It's simple. So, if folks who go through life blindfolded, and they're not just content with blindfolding themselves, they want their children and everybody else to be blindfolded. So do you want to be one of these people? So let's have a look at this. Remember we're dealing with scale. Is there justice in this image? Is there righteousness in this image? When someone blindfolds you and tells you not to look? Whose scale is twisted? It's their scale. And this is what the system is about. It's about blindfolding you, and blinding your eyes and blinding your mind and stopping you from reasoning and thinking. So let's look at this image. Let's take a pilot. See, this pilot can come and show you this image. It says, I'm a pilot and I took this image and you can clearly see the curve of the earth behind me. Let's apply justice on a scale to this image. If the pilot, what he's saying is true, 
then the pilot cannot see the earth in front of him because the earth behind him right so what you're seeing is the curve of the camera lens this pilot is either deliberately fooling you or lying to you or he's an idiot because if I take that ball and I put it behind him and it's the same size well then my scale is true whose scale is twisted it's this pilot see the person's a pilot and he shows you this image and says yeah you can see the curve of the earth remember it's not just about size you have to look at all the elements in the image so there are two things in this image that tell you that the earth's not a ball so can you see them take the blindfold off and reason and think well the first is the pilot would have to be able to see the entire ball earth the pilot cannot just see a curve of the earth in front of his plane window it means if he turned his head to the right and he looked down he'd have to see the back of the ball and another issue is the sun the sun would have to be 195 million kilometers in front of him so therefore the hot spot cannot be in front of him so what should have happened is if the sun is 195 million kilometers in front of him the light can't bend around that means the earth underneath him would be in darkness and the, the pilot would see the entire back end of the ball earth and this pilot right let's look at this the horizon is flat behind him and it's flat to his left but look in the front of him what do you see look at the curve of his helmet we see the horizon is also in front of him his helmet's curved it doesn't mean there's a ball earth in front of him it's just the curve of his helmet the earth is flat how can this pilot take this image see this image is accurate and true because the horizon is also in front of him but it's his helmet that's curving the earth in its reflection the same with action cameras curve the earth and people say well there's the curve of the earth it's a curve of the camera lens now how is that justice how is their scale being honest and true and it's not just about size who is being dishonest if a pilot shows you an image and it shows you a curve of the earth he is being dishonest because it's not possible now here's the point that they use this scale to show you that the earth is curved when you use the same scale to disprove it then they say your scale is wrong remember whose scale is it when you use their own scale their calculations or how they're lying then they say your scale is not true so simply I can take this image and stretch it and that's all they're doing that's all they're doing so now let's look at size and scale so here's the dark gray ball if I show you this image and a man says I can see the boat and the curve of the horizon between myself and the boat well then all I do is if I make the ball bigger right the man stays the same size just the distance between the man and the ship increases and the problem is that they tell you you can only see 10 kilometers to the horizon it means you'd have to see the, the ship 20 kilometers away so do you see the problem the bigger I make the ball earth eventually this man would be able to see a quarter of the way around the earth to see the ship at eye level so whose scale is wrong it's their scale why because there is no curve the earth is flat there is no curve and they're just using deception lies and trickery to trick people any pilot who says he can see the ball earth curve on the horizon has to see the entire ball doesn't matter how small i make this airplane that does not change they'll tell you it's about size this is their line of thinking they're stupid and they want everybody to be blindfolded 
So would you read a book blindfolded? He said, no, that's silly. Would you read a book blindfolded and then get someone else to tell you what you've been reading? You'd say, no, that's crazy. Well, why are you doing it in life? Take the blindfold off, look at the horizon, look at the clouds, look where the sun is, look at the shadows. you see the earth flat. You're not living on a spinning ball. You need to take the blindfold off. You see, if I'm reading this book, and then I'm getting someone else to tell me what I'm reading, you say, well, that's crazy. Well, if you're not looking at the world around you, and someone else is telling you what you're seeing, that's the same thing. And when you point out to them that an airplane flying from point A to point B who flies in a straight line, his altitude has to decrease and increase. Otherwise, an airplane cannot fly in a straight line. The airplane has to fly in a curve. And they'll come up with all sorts of nonsense to tell you that an airplane cannot fly in a straight line. So for an airplane to fly in a straight line from point A to B, the ground underneath the airplane has to decrease and then increase. They'll come and tell you all sorts of nonsense about altitude, that the altitude must be maintained. That means this airplane then has to fly in a curve. It's impossible for an airplane to fly in a straight line over the curved earth. Yet airplanes fly in an absolutely straight line. So whose scale is twisted? So who's being the snake? And who's being the scale? You've got to take the blindfold off. Now, so some folks have put this clip on YouTube where MIG is flying over the earth and they say, well, there you can clearly see the curve of the earth and flat earthers are in denial. No, you're just a dumbass and I'm going to prove it to you. If you're saying that this MIG can see the curve of the earth, then you're a dumbass. What you're seeing is the curve of the action camera lens. So yeah, the image is right. You'll say, well, these images show this MIG flying over a curved earth. So let's have a look at it. They've got a curved earth in front, behind, and at the side of the airplane. Right, so let's lay this out in planar surfaces in 3D space. So here's my MIG, right? The MIG's supposed to be flying over the earth, right? You'll say, okay, well, my scale's not right. So I'm making the MIG a bit bigger so that we can see what we're talking about. How can the MIG see the earth in front of him? He's flying over the ball earth. He also sees the earth behind him. And he sees the earth, the ball earth on his left and on his right. How is that possible? If the MIG is above the earth. Doesn't matter how big I make that ball. The MIG would have to be flying over four balls you say well that's crazy well that's what you're saying how can the MIG fly over the earth and see the curve of the earth in front of him behind him and to his left and to his right so what you're seeing is the curve of the camera lens so let's have a look at that in 3D space now it's going to be a bit more detailed this pilot would have to be flying in a circle like that for him to see the earth in front of him, on his side, behind him, and then on his left hand side. The pilot can't fly over the curve of the earth. Then how can the pilot see the curve of the earth in, in front of him? The, the camera would have to continue to rotate as the plane flies and turns. So that the ball earth can stay in front of the camera lens. That's how stupid it is. Right? It's stupid. The pilot, for him to see the horizon in front of him, would have to be turning his plane like this. Now you'll say your scale is wrong. No, my scale is true because compare the size of the earth to what the pilot sees. And then what would happen from the perspective of the camera and the pilot? the earth would have to rotate. 
when that pilot is flying around, if he's flying over a ball, and you're saying that's the curve, the ball would rotate when the camera turns, and where the pilot turns. And so my scale is true. That's how stupid it is. The pilot, if he flies in a straight line, has to fly over the ball earth. He'll be flying from space and back into space. For the pilot to see the earth on his left, and then on his right would have to do a time warp, flip from one side of the earth to the other side. It's stupid. And people go through life with a blindfold on and when you show them that it's stupid, they say your scale is wrong. Whose scale is twisted? It's them. They're clowns. So even if a person says, hey, I'm a pilot and wherever I turn my head, I can see the board earth in front of me. That's because he's an idiot. Can an idiot fly an airplane? Oh yes. There are a few of them out there. But there are many pilots who simply see the earth flat and they just keep quiet and I don't blame them. So as a pilot, he can see the ball earth wherever he looks. So, it's a lesson for us. It's a lesson for us. Don't go through life blindfolded. You know, let's take the Bible as an example. If you're reading the Bible and you're allowing someone else to tell you what the Bible says, but what's the point of reading it? You have to read it yourself and understand what it's saying yourself. It's up to you. Don't allow someone else to tell you what the book says. You must read it yourself. You've got to take the blindfolds off. Otherwise, you'll become a clown yourself. If you get taught by clowns, you become a clown. If you're a passenger, right, and you're looking out the window and you're saying, I'm seeing the curve because that's what I've been told I must see. And then you're a bozo. So, any pilot who says he can see the ball earth curve on the horizon has to see the entire ball earth. It doesn't matter how small I make this airplane or how big I make it. The principle is true. So look at this and think, how stupid is this when they say this? Why? Because the plane landing has to travel in a straight line to land. He would not need to dip the plane nose down to land. He'd just fly in a straight line and, and land. In actual fact, the earth would be coming up towards him because he's flying in a straight line. He's not descending. The ground is coming up toward him. Right. Two planes flying past each other. The ground is level, they see each other at the same height. How does this work on a curved earth? doesn't matter how small I make these airplanes or how big I make that ball, the issue is the same. It is stupid. You've been trained by clowns. So, you can go through life and enjoying life. Those people who are being misled and are blind are not having a good life. They just dumbasses living in a cage. When you're at a plane and you get served a drink, hold the drink up to your eye level, look at the horizon, they both level, it means the ground underneath you is level, the earth is flat. Look at this image, right? The plane, the level in the, in the, the champagne level is at the same level of the seats. Enjoy life. Don't allow these clowns to manipulate you. Because they need slaves. They need dumbass, blind slaves. Right? In the system, they're looking for dumbass, blind slaves. Don't be their slaves. Reason, think, and look. Make choices and decisions in your life that will benefit yourself. Don't become someone's slave. It's a choice. You have a choice to be a slave or to be a free man. Enjoy your life. This lady's glass is tilted, right, but the champagne is level. If they look out the window left and right, they see the level, the, the horizon level with them, tells you the earth is flat. They're not flying over a ball, right? Doesn't matter how big I make this airplane or how small I make this airplane, the land is level. It's not the scale, it's the angle. 
if the plane is flying over a curve, they can never t drink alcohol. They can never drink. If the ground underneath him is curved, the plane would be always flying at an angle and they could never drink their champagne on an aeroplane. Right. Hi folks, my perspective here, and in this video clip I'll be looking at images like this that some people use to try and prove that the earth is a ball. Where a building they say is below the horizon and is sticking up above the horizon. Well, on a ball earth this image is totally impossible. If I show you this image, you get to understand that this building cannot shift from this position and as you move away maintain its same perspective it's impossible so when I show you this image now you get to understand that it's impossible so let's analyze this deeper right now look at the look at the angle of the road if this was a curve from the building to the horizon, that angle of that road on the opposite side of that curve cannot maintain that same angle and perspective. And it's the same with the building. So let's let's look at this. So you and the building are on the same line and so is the water. The water can't rise above that line. So all that is simply happening is that the further away you are from the object the more it would lean over backwards. So for you to see the water level halfway up the building, the building would be leaning over backward and the horizon line would be cut off, truncated and the quality of the light on the one side of the curve would be different to the other side because the angle of the reflection of the light would be in opposite directions. Yet we don't see this. There's no change in light from yourself, between yourself and the horizon, none whatsoever. So the building as it dropped over the curve would exponentially lean back and foreshorten and the further away you moved it would do this quickly and the building would distort the further away it was from you so it's impossible then for the building to be vertical and yet be behind the horizon line it's impossible but what we see is that the ocean between us and the building is flat. Now, if you took your camera at eye level, you'd be fine. But if you drop your camera down from your eye level on your tripod and you drop it down to the ground, what you will notice, because there's a distortion in your lens, when the buildings left and right would lean over slightly, the same happens top and bottom you will notice that a false horizon would rise up as you drop your camera down a false horizon would rise up between yourself and the true horizon so the better the camera lens the less noticeable this will be but on the cheaper cameras this is quite noticeable you can try this for yourself Go stand on a straight road, drop your camera down, and you'll see a false horizon rise up between the true horizon and yourself. So some people, they are doing this deliberately and then posting the video clip and saying, you see, there's the buildings dropping below the shoreline, and so the earth is a ball. Or the earth is curved, but it's not true. So 
So if we look at the top, if there was a curve in the horizon, the buildings would exponentially drop off and they would distort, fall over and foreshorten quite quickly and progressively towards the horizon line. Now, on the bottom, this is what we see, linear perspective in the buildings. Now the angles don't change and people don't get this, so watch. See, it's, all the buildings are upright. Now those angles are measurable in linear perspective. They don't change. This is what we see in buildings. Because the earth is flat. There is no curve on the horizon. Look at this image. You see, if you ha had an image, if you were taking a, a photograph of the Statue of Liberty, you see the further back you moved away from the statue, the more it would drop down and distort. And the higher that image is, the more it would distort. That's important to remember. What we see though is this linear perspective all the buildings the buildings in the background don't drop down now watch this image this is a video clip that i took of youtube now ask yourself how is it that this guy you see he has no agenda he's bought a camera and he's saying wow look at the zoom on this camera now look at the windows on this ship we see there's the the waves, look at the windows, look at the angle, now look at the angle of the cables on that bridge behind, now that's a fair distance between that bridge and that ship, yet the perspective is the same, look at this, no change in perspective whatsoever, because the water is flat, now the same guy filming some buildings with the same camera. But watch how he zooms in here all the way from his position to the shoreline. He sees the shoreline. No problem. Look at the angles. You see those triangles? Look at them. Look at the cars in the background. They're not falling over. Everything is vertical. How is it that this guy look at the buildings? Now look at the buildings on the left, they are closer, same perspective. How is it that this guy can do this? It's because he doesn't have an agenda. He's looking at the camera and he's saying, wow, look at the zoom. And the zoom proves that the earth is flat, that is what it is. There's a different guy, look at that building in the background. You see it, it's completely vertical and you can see the shoreline. And now he zooms back. And this guy, he's, he's not interested in anything. He doesn't know the issue between the ball earth and the flat earth. He's just gone out, taken his camera and said, wow, it's quite an amazing zoom. And from this distance, it's flat. Yes, so pay attention because there are some folks out there that have an agenda and are dropping their camera down to the shoreline and taking distorted images like this and saying, you see, there's a curve. Whereas you've just seen video now of a person zooming on the shoreline, no problem. And it is what it is. This is Table Mountain in the province of the, of the Cape in South Africa. The original name of this mountain was called Burikwaho and today we know it as Table Mountain. That means you would be able to fit 10 statues of liberties from top to bottom. Yet you will never see this mountain falling over. No matter where you form or photograph this mountain from. See, if the mountain was falling over, you'd see the bottom of the clouds amongst Table Mountain. But no matter how far away from this mountain you position yourself, Table Mountain never falls over. 
The Table Mountain can be observed 200 kilometers out to sea and it will be upright. So how come no one's ever taken a photograph of the top of Table Mountain sticking up above the ocean? Because the ocean is flat. Look at this image. You see, you'll notice that you can see the buildings. Now look carefully, how do, you, how do I know that? Well, look on the buildings on the right. You see the mountains on the right side of Table Mountain, they actually don't go down, they actually go up in the horizon. So therefore, you can see those buildings at the bottom of Table Mountain completely. They're not falling below or dropping below the horizon, because the horizon is flat. The buildings aren't falling over, neither the mountains falling over. See, these mountains, the further away they are, they raise up. So there's no curve from Robben Island, this is Robben Island, there is no curve in the ocean from Robben Island to Cape Town, or from Robben Island to those mountains in the distance. So we've been taught that the Earth is a ball and it's spinning in space, but it's simply not true. You see Nelson Mandela was incarcerated on this island for over 30 years. But many people are in mental slavery their whole life. Nelson Mandela had no choice. He couldn't just get up and leave. And he knew he was in prison. But most people on earth don't realize they're in a mental prison and are enslaved. And all they need to do is get up and walk away. A free man. You don't need to be enslaved by this global delusion. And he has images. How is it that from this mountain you see Table Mountain not falling over? Look at the mountains in the distance. And you can take, take a cable car and go up Table Mountain. Right? And look at the mountains and look at the bay in the background. There's no curve from this point to the bay in the far distance. You can see that shoreline because it's flat. Look at this image. A wide angle shot. Look in the distance. You'll see the shoreline in the bay. And the horizon is flat. Look at the clouds in the horizon. Now in this image, how is it from so taken from the top of Table Mountain as the sun is setting, you can actually see the setting sun rays right up on the shoreline of Table Mountain. How can the light bend around the curve of the earth so that it can illuminate the waves on the shoreline when the sun is busy setting on the horizon if the earth's a ball this image is impossible on a ball earth so no matter how far we are from table mountain it's always upright it stays the same and people have observed table mountain from 200 kilometers out at sea and it's upright no one has ever taken a photograph with the tip of the mountain sticking up above the sea and said, hey, check this, this table mountain. Because it's rubbish. So these are the, the clouds that sit on top of table mountain. They're often referred to as the table cross. Table mountains, table cross. Yet the Earth is supposed to be spinning at 1,600 kilometers an hour at that phenomenal speed and yet the mountains in this time lapse just simply hang around on Table Mountain like a table cross. Because the Earth is not spinning. 
reality. This would not be possible if the Earth was spinning at 1,600 kilometers an hour. So we've been lied to and we've been imprisoned. So Table Mountain, you see the top of Table Mountain would be moving faster because it's higher than Cape Town. So as you left and the higher you went, there would be a ch change in speed. You'd start to move faster as you went up. You see, and that's where this mental slavery comes in. Now, I'll show you an example of this mental slavery at work. So you see this guy, he's bought himself a new camera and he's testing out the zoom. And so he sees this mountain and he sees the moon. And now he starts to zoom in on both. But he's not thinking. He doesn't realize something that is right in front of his face. He doesn't realize something that is so obvious. You see, how can he zoom in onto the mountain? That's a few hundred kilometers away. And then zoom in onto the moon, because the moon should be 400,000 kilometers away. And it's not because of size. You see, you can take your camera and the big mountains in the background, you zoom in. If they're out of focal range of your camera, they'll just be big and blurry. So, the obvious is the moon is in the Earth's atmosphere. It's not 400,000 kilometers away. And yet this person doesn't even see this or think about it because of mental slavery.